Who's got tomorrow off for Labor Day? Let's see some hands high if you got tomorrow off. Look at that. You guys are feeling good about yourselves. Who's working tomorrow? Let's see some hands. Stand up if you're working tomorrow on Labor Day. Stand up. Here's what we're going to do. We're going we're to treat you guys special. If you're working tomorrow, standing up, everybody seated around you, get out a 50, give them a $50 bill. <laughs> All right, be seated. I don't think nobody's going to do that. That's good. I wish that for you, though. Man, I'm excited today. What a week it's been. I can't believe how many people have come to church this week. I'm so thankful to be here week three of this series called Trending. We're in this little six-week series. Two weeks ago, I told you seven. I lied. It's six weeks. There's a reason for that. You'll hear about that as we jump into a brand new series a couple of weeks from now. So week one, we talked about courage. How many people remember that we talked about courage week one? I said that Wednesday night, I didn't say courage. I said, what did we talk about two weeks ago? Crickets. <laughs> Nobody said a word. We had 920 people come to church Wednesday night. In that first service, no one said a word. Then I said, what did my friend Pastor Phil talk about last week? And everybody said? Discipline. Discipline. So we know our attention span is a week or less. I do want to say this publicly. He is a dear friend of mine. I love him to death. I'm so thankful for him. I'm so thankful that he could come up last week and his wife was here for the first time. Give it up for Pastor Phil, everybody, to speak into our church. I love it. So the question is, where was I? Our bass player, Marty, he came up to me Wednesday. He goes, what, were you on another vacation again? The answer is no. I was in Florida, though, for a huge family wedding. My wife's side of the family, here's the picture, our niece Julia standing next to my wife who looks a lot like my daughter Miranda. Miranda was the maid of honor. Julia got married to the love of her life, Ryan. We got to be a part of it, Catholic wedding and all. I was a little part, but I got a chance to kick back and hear the priest talk for an hour. <laughs> my son leaned over to me and said, Dad, that's why everybody loves you, man. 15 minutes without music, it's personal. But it was, a great, it was a great time. That's where we were. We got a chance to be down there. If I did not go, and I hate missing church any time of the year, especially this time of year, I would be divorced. So I had to go. I loved it. I was so thankful to be a part of my wife's sister. Um, that's her youngest daughter, our youngest niece, Julia. Such a great individual. She would give you the shirt off her back. So we got a chance to go down there and sweat to death in Florida. It was awesome. At least we left before the hurricane. So uh, pray for everybody down there, including everybody where Pastor Phil lives. A lot, of, a lot of churches did not have church today. I have a really dear friend who lives there. He pastors on the beach. Somebody's got to do it, literally on Gulf Boulevard. And with that sometimes comes floods. They did not have church today because their church got flooded. So just pray for all of that. So I'm glad to be here. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew 26, James chapter 4. And the meat of the message today is from a passage of Scripture in 2 Timothy, New Testament letter, 2 Timothy chapter 2. We have a lot of people watching online. I want to just shout out everybody watching online. I was so, man, it was such an awesome thing to have a couple that are watching from the NICU, the first service. Their little boy has been in the intensive care for 12 days. He's doing better, and they got a chance to watch as a family for the first time since his birth, church online. How about that? So we got a lot of people watching everywhere. Um, just to shout out a few, Tanessa, Jessica, and Dina. I guess your name ends with A. A lot of people watching. And the Holler family from North Carolina. Let's holler at the Holler family. Give it up for everybody. All right, cool. All right, so week three, courage was week one. Discipline, week two. This last week, and I could preach all day. I've been going. This is my fifth service, and I'm still ready to go. So we're going to be here for three hours because i got to get this out of me. You're like, please don't. Um, this week's value in this series is, is loyalty. There's a lot of values I could talk about, but loyalty has risen to the top in my mind because it's a word that is trended out of our society. And that little video that you just watched, that little boy that showed all that loyalty, what a tear-jerking video, but he made a statement that I want you to hear. Hey, everybody wants it, and once you experience it, you'll never be the same. So the reason I think maybe loyalty rose up in my mind, and I just wrote it down a while ago, it was a conversation I had with an acquaintance. It wasn't a friend. He was, a, he was a fellow minister, a pastor. And here's how the conversation went. Hey, now, Pastor Brent, I hear you've been a pastor of a pretty big church for a long time. Tell me about it. And I said, listen, I've, I've, 
I've been a pastor of Pathways Church in Sevierville, Tennessee. My parents and my wife and I planted this church in 1996. I've been the senior pastor, and next month will be 20 years, and that's just my story. And then he stopped, this minister, this person I do not know, and with this kind of perplexing look in his face said this, wait, 20 years? Haven't you run out of stories to tell? <laughs> Illustrations to share? 20 years? You've... And then he said this, because now I'm getting paranoid. I'm like, I, I, I think people like me. I don't know. <laughs> I never stopped and thought about it. Then he made this statement, aren't people bored of you yet? 20 years? And I'm like... <laughs> And I thought about it, and it's like, and he goes on to say, you know what? And he, I guess he pastored, I asked, it was just inquiring minds want to know, how many churches have you pastored? And I think he was, he's younger than me, and he was up to six. And I thought, okay. And then he said, well, you know, it's, it's, if, you, if you're there somewhere five to seven years, Brent, and you move on, it, 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 it stays fresh. You mean the stuff that you've used for five years, you can go somewhere else and use it all again. You're like a school teacher just pulled out the lesson plans, right? From and it basically was this conversation without saying it. Hey, you know what? Loyalty has left the building. Loyalty. We change houses and spouses and jobs and careers. And, and I know there are all reasons for that, but today more than ever, we're pretty much loyal to ourselves first. That's our society teaches us that. That's what we look to. Loyalty has left the building, so to speak. Now, again, this week and next week, I want you to hear me clearly. Yesterday ended last night. You, you are a different person today than you were yesterday or a season ago. So don't feel down and go, well, Brent, you're talking about me. No, I'm talking about today and into the future. I do believe a value called loyalty, a virtue called faithfulness has trended away, and everybody wants it. And once you experience it, boy, you'll never be the same. So just listen with a humble heart, all of us, young to old, because today we struggle. So I'm going to make amends with something I said in the Legacy Trek series. Remember me about the pets that don't go to heaven and how much grief I got from people. If you were visiting, I made a statement that we are created in God's image. I don't believe animals are created with a soul like we are. That's biblical, but neither way. Um, and people got mad as hornets said really bad things about me. Because when we think of loyalty, we don't think of humans anymore. We think of our pets. So I'm going to make amends today, everybody. Ready? A German Shepherd, a Doberman, and a cat all die and go to heaven. <laughs> they all three go to heaven, and God asked each pet, he goes, listen, before I let you in, i got to ask you a question. What do you believe in? He looked at the German Shepherd, and he said, hey, German Shepherd, what do you believe in? And the German Shepherd goes, I believe in discipline, and I believe in loyalty to my owner. And God goes, man, that's a great answer. Why don't you sit right here to my left, right here by my side. Keep an eye on things that direction. He goes to the Doberman, and Dobermans get bad raps. Anybody have a Doberman pincher? Let's see some hands. A few of you. Uh, he goes to the Doberman. Hey, Doberman, what do you believe in? And the Doberman goes, I, leave, I believe in love and protecting my owner. Guy goes, I like that. Why don't you sit to my right side? Keep an eye on things to the right. Then he goes to the cat. Cat, what do you believe in? The cat simply looked back at God and said, I believe you're in my seat. <laughs> Loyalty, right? All right, some of you are like this. A football coach, a head football coach, not Jim Harbaugh. We put this picture up because he always looks mad. A head football coach was losing every game that season. It was horrible. A friend could not be found anywhere. The fan base was mad. The community was mad. Everybody wanted to run him out of town. Some of your coaches in the room, you know, we like you when you're winning. If not, go pet your dog, right? That's your only friend. I like my dog Cash because he don't care if I preach good or not. He still loves me. You always know, right, the sign of loyalty. If you go home and lock your wife and your dog in the garage, and when you open the garage door, who's going to love you the most? That's who's most loyal. 
It's going to be your dog. <laughs> but a head football coach was upset. He, a friend couldn't be found. It was a bad season. He's home with his dog on his lap, just crying and talking to his wife and like, listen, man, I, I just can't find a friend. My dog is my only friend. And his wife goes, well, at least you got a dog. And then he goes, but I really think everybody needs two loyal friends. To which the next day the wife went and bought him another dog. (laughs) That's bad. Last one is more of a tear-jerking story, not really humorous. But if you go to Edinburgh, Scotland today, there's there's a plaque of a small Scottish terrier right there in the middle of Edinburgh with all the tombstones and all the statues of angels and men and women and Fighters of Scottish days gone by, you're going to find a larger-than-life statue of a Scottish terrier in the middle of Edinburgh, Scotland. Why? And here's why. This is what the plaque reads if you go there today. Back in 1858, the owner of this two-year-old Scottish terrier died. The little puppy followed the funeral procession to its final resting place of its owner. And after everyone had gone and the grave had been covered... This little dog crawled to the foot of the grave as if to wait for his master's return. The dog waited and waited through all kinds of weather and unbelievable ordeals. People would come and capture the dog and try to take the dog home, feeling sorry for the dog. But the dog would always escape and would always return to the foot of the grave of his master to continue his vigil, waiting for his return. This little Scottish terrier waited at the foot of his owner's grave for 14 years until the little dog died and was buried with his owner. (laughs) No wonder when we think of loyalty, we think of our animals. Loyalty, what is it? Can you define it? You're like, I think I know. Well, here's what Google says, right? Loyalty is faithfulness or a devotion to a person, a country, a group, or a cause. Loyalty is faithfulness. It's devotion to a person, to a country, to a group, or a cause. Another definition is simply put, loyalty is the quality of staying firm in your friendship or support. Thick or thin, good times or bad times, staying firm in your friendship. Loyalty is a hard value to identify as a problem because disloyalty is everywhere, but yet no one thinks it's them. So let's do this. I want you to raise your hand. I'm going to ask you a question. See how honest you are. How many of you think, just be honest, I'm a very loyal person? Let's see some hands. Raise them, raise them really, really, really high. Look around the room. Okay, you can put your hands down. Wednesday night I had people stand up. Now it got a little weird because three that I saw decided not to stand. In the sea of everyone standing, I'm like, that's a gutsy move right there to show us all, hey, I'm, I'm pretty disloyal. Loyalty is hard it's hard to, to really say, hey, I'm, I'm not a, a loyal person. Loyalty is hard to kind of look at in the mirror and go, wait a minute, if I'm honest, yeah, Brent, you're right. I'm probably more loyal to myself than anything else. Loyalty is a problem. Uh, one more joke. Uh, it's, not, it's a crazy joke. Uh, somebody told me this joke, and I laughed out loud, so I threw it in there. Uh, somebody said this, loyalty is very important to my wife, but my girlfriend doesn't care for loyalty at all. It's funny how different sisters can be. That's super weird. (laughs) That's super weird. Okay. Shouldn't have gone there. Took it to a whole other place. So let's look at Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26 is the classic loyal, disloyal moment that a lot of us can go to and go, man, I can't believe he did that. Everybody say this with me. Come on, man. Matthew chapter 26, verse 33 through 35, set the stage as after the Last Supper. Jesus and his disciples are walking down the Mount of Olives to a garden called Gethsemane. It would be the night that Jesus would be arrested, then he would be beaten and he would be crucified. And this is when this conversation takes place. Listen to the loyalty factor. Verse 33 of Matthew 26, Peter replies to Jesus, even if all fall away on account of you, Jesus, I never will fall away. That's a statement, a huge statement of loyalty. Jesus reigns on his parade and says, "Uh, Peter, I'm going to tell you the truth here, buddy. You don't want to hear the truth, but I'm going to tell it to you. 
this very night before the rooster crows three times, you're going to be disloyal. You're going to disown me three times. But Peter declared, right, even if I have to die with you, man, I will never disown you. I mean, he is emphatic. He's raising his hand in church. I'm a loyal person. Two truths about loyalty that we learn from Peter. And this is what I want to get at because we're going to elevate this to a whole other level and take the focus off of ourselves completely at the end of this message. Two truths about loyalty. Ready? This is for you and I to know. Number one, here we go. True loyalty is proven. It is not proclaimed. It's easy to say something, but you got to prove it. True loyalty is proven. It's not proclaimed. Proverbs, the book of wisdom, chapter 20, verse 6, says this, and it's a very true statement about our world even today. Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person, who can find? We have to learn as a follower of Christ, it's not about talking the talk, it's about walking the walk. We have to embrace this value of loyalty, not just to proclaim it and raise our hands and go, I'm a loyal person, but to walk it. So the virtue, what is a value and a virtue are different, right? Values we intellectually hold, hey, we know that's true, but a virtue is we live it with our lifestyle. What is higher than loyalty? When you think of spiritual things, faithful is the word, faithful. Somebody wrote this, faithful is better to describe a healthy relationship. It means both are committed to not endangering the relationship. Being loyal is good, but here's our society, ready? This is telling. But most loyal people are often taken for granted and tagged as fools in the end. So that's why we're not loyal to DirecTV or The Dish or Charter. They take us for granted. I want to get a better deal. I want them to come out and swap the satellite so I can get one month free. Loyalty has left the building. Loyalty is a bad word in our society. We don't like it because, hey, you know what? I'll be taken for granted and tagged as a fool in the end. We're not loyal to a lot of things that matter, but we are are loyal to our brands, right? So I want to give you something about me. You might not like me after this, but I'm going to give you some brands that I kind of feel I'm loyal to, brands that I like. I'm a Delta guy. When it comes to flying, I like to fly Delta if I can, Allegiant if I have to right? Put the quarter in for oxygen, start the, start the engine, the last one on, you know, Allegiant. But I like Delta for years, and it started going back to Israel years ago. I became a medallion member, and I like it when I go on board, and they're like, Mr. Freeman, thank you for being a medallion member. And I'm like, well, thank you for having me. I love it. I, I, I'm with John Chris, a Christian comedian. He had a bit recently. He's, he said he was flying a Spirit Airlines flight, Spirits discounted like a legion. And all, all over the intercom, it goes, we have a medical emergency. Are there any doctors on board? John Chris goes, they're doctors. They're not flying Spirit Airlines. They're all on Delta. <laughs> he goes, you should rephrase that. Has anybody watched an episode of Grey's Anatomy? We need your help. <laughs> anyway, Home Depot, I'm a Home Depot person. I literally feel like I'm cheating on my wife if I go into Lowe's. Is it weird? You're like, Brent, yeah, you're weird. Outback. I haven't been to Outback in a while, but I'm still committed to Outback. I still like the cheese fries. If push comes to shove and you're like, Brent, I would like to get you a gift card. I don't know, for any random reason, that would be great. Outback would work for me. iPhone? I live in 2023. I'm not an Android person. I'm not a caveman. (laughs) J. Floyd's. J. Floyd's Golf and Guns. You think I'm going to buy a golf ball from Dick's Sporting Goods? I'm loyal. Come on, everybody. Starbucks, I know. That's satanic. I shouldn't go there. I get it. We should boycott that. But that pink drink calls my name in the middle of the night. It's just not as good as Dunkin' Donuts. I know Dunkin's Christian, but I just think Starbucks, if I have a choice and they're right across the street, Who's with me? Come on, loyal Starbucks people. You know who you are. We're wrapped around the building. Don't make it like we don't go. Ford, I'm a Ford guy. I'm sorry. I tried Chevy, but I'm a Ford guy. You Chevy owners, when it snows this year, apparently it's going to snow a lot, call me. I'll pull you out, okay? If you need help, I love you. 
on clouds. I like those on cloud shoes anymore. I'll drive over to Ogles and right there near Tanger and go in there and see if there's a pair of on clouds. And if my wife loves me, she'll buy them. Uh, waggles. If, if I got to stop for get gas, I'm going to look for waggles. I don't know why I'm weird. I don't know if it's just me or not. And Mountain, Diet Mountain Dew is in heaven. I'm loyal to that brand because it's a heavenly drink that will be there. And it allows us to glow in the dark as well. We can see ourselves in the dark. Who's with me? You got your brands. Let's see some hands. You're loyal. Some of you are like, not me. I'm just loyal to the cost. Come on. All right. Even if you hate me with all this, we'll all unite together. Ready? There we go. There we go. We'll all unite together. We feel better about ourselves. Okay. I'm going to meddle for a minute. I want you to listen to me closely. Just meddle for just a minute. I think about this often. It keeps me up. Have you ever thought how loyal we are to our sports teams? Even the ones that will let us down. I mean, the Vols let us down for more than a decade. Like going on 15 years. They were awful. We would throw stuff at the TV. Get really mad. Have a fight with our significant other. And then we would look one last time on Google. When's the game start next week? I'm ready to go. I'm fired up. <laughs> last night, Chris Fraley, not to, not to say any names. He's going to remain nameless. He's out in the parking lot. Chris Fraley. He had his ball stuff on. He came in last night with his balls regalia. I was surprised he was here, but the game was at noon. It was way over by church time, so he could come to both. And I looked at him last night, and I said, Chris, let me tell you that this is, this is, this is what I want you to do. I feel this is your preacher. I'm giving him the Catholic sign and all that. I'm like, listen, I think you should switch your Vols allegiance, and you should become a Florida Gator fan. <laughs> he looked at me like I was Charles Manson. I mean, it was... <laughs> He's like, I would never do that. Even in the parking lot, he goes, I'll find another preacher. I don't, I'm never going <laughs> to. So think about this. Think about that, our sports teams, and think about our favorite fast food restaurant. You go through Chick-fil-A and they get your order wrong. Nobody's going to go, well, I'm never going back. They have a new pimento cheese chicken sandwich that I tried yesterday. It's really good. And you're like, Brent, they're not open today. Don't talk about Chick-fil-A. <laughs> you let the church... Do one little thing against you. Not follow your agenda for any reason. Somebody in the church to, to, to have any word, we're gone before we know it. A ball team? We'll fight for that ball team. They, I don't care how bad they are forever. But you let things that matter, we simply walk away quick. Well, I don't want to be taken for granted. Listen, you don't come to church. We are the church. And I'm not going to talk about switching churches. I know that happens. I don't know why. I don't know why. But I understand those are seasons in life. But here's where it's bleeding to because this is everything. It's not just about us switching jobs and switching. We're not going to switch ball teams. Okay, we might switch from Marshalls to TJ Maxx and back and forth. Aren't they owned by the same people, ladies? I mean, come on. It's the same clothing. They just swap them around. So you feel like you got a deal and it's special. I don't say that mean. My wife is that way. I'm like, how many times can you go there every day? Because there's always something brand new. It's a hidden gem. But when it comes to our faith, how many people are like, well, God, your timing is not my timing. Your timing kind of stinks. I don't understand why you're doing what you're doing in my life. I don't like where I'm at. I'm gone. I read a Facebook post. Recently, some of you probably saw it. I think it was an open post about somebody that was a Christian and now they're a Wiccan. They're like a witch. Did anybody see that? We're like, well, I don't like Christianity. It's, I feel much more free about being a Wiccan and a witch. And it was just that. It was championing and touting. Hey, you know what? I'm walking away from this faith. I don't believe in that. I want to be loyal to my, myself. Where does that get in us? I equate salvation to this, and I want you to hear me because we're going to have a moment for you to, to have a moment that you've never given your life to Christ at the end of the service. I want you to do this. And here's how I equate Christianity. Listen, it's not a religion. It's, it's a relationship with God. It's like me, and this is how I use it all the time. It's like me driving the car of my life. I've got my knuckles on the wheel. I'm doing my own thing. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going where I want to go. And that relationship with Christ simply is releasing your hands from the wheel and getting into the passenger seat, 
submitting yourself to God and say, God, you guide and direct me. I don't know where I'm going. And I'm going to be smart enough to understand that when it's all said and done, no matter what I go through, I'm sticking with you. Stickability is gone. We've lost that. We've now transfer portaled everything. Did you watch our vols yesterday? I didn't know half those guys. The whole offensive line apparently transferred in from somewhere else. And it'll happen again and again and again. That's our world. We swap around because we don't want to be taken for granted. We got Hey, there's a sweetness. And that video really speaks it. It's something that everybody really wants. And once you experience loyalty, you're never the same. Two, what we learn from Peter is disloyalty is born out of a divided heart. I would love to stand here and tell you, some of you are going to be disappointed in what I'm going to say, and I understand, but I need you to hear me clearly. Ready? I would love to stand here and tell you this, that since the day that I accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life, at 15 years old on a Sunday night in my dad's church in Florida, when I stepped forward, he wasn't speaking, someone else was speaking, and I gave my life to Christ. I was a preacher's kid. I had a lot of head knowledge, but I did not have a living relationship with God, and I knew it. I had my hands on the wheel. And I didn't know where I was going. But I let my hands off the wheel and I said, God, I want you to have me in my life. I'm smart enough here to know that you're a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I need you in my life. At 15 years old, I stepped forward. I would love to tell everybody from then until now, I'm 53 years old, all these years that God has had all of my heart all of the time. Never one moment have I ever strayed away and said, well, God, you know what? Uh, I've got this. You don't seem to know what you're doing. I would love to tell you guys my whole life, but that would be a flat out lie. How many times in dark places, in moments that were overwhelmed, that we go, God, I don't know if you got this, man. I mean, the Apostle Peter, we pick hard on him. Like, I can't believe you would deny Jesus three times. How many of us have denied our faith when we got into a moment that was over our heads in a moment we didn't see coming? And we're like, I don't know. How many people today, in the hardness of life, in the trials of life, you're like, am I on the right team here? seems like our culture is telling us pretty hard to go away from Jesus and this followership of Jesus thing. It seems like that's... That's everywhere. Well, James chapter 4, if you have your Bibles, let's go to James chapter 4 because it really tells us exactly this. All disloyalty is born out of a divided heart. And I preached it at the first of the year in the Walking Free series. And it really is the key word for the year in my mind in our church. What I'm really after is submission, to humble ourselves. God is God and we are not. And we are to submit to him. That is a countercultural message. No one wants to hear that message. I get it. But that is what life is all about. To take our hands off the wheel and let Christ guide us. James says this, New Living Translation, chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. So humble yourself before the Lord. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. And there are times this should should happen in our lives. Ready? Let there be tears for what we have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter. And sometimes there has to be gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. A lot of people, I'm sure you'll agree with me, but a lot of us, rare really is the person that hasn't experienced, you have not experienced the pain of failure. Who's experienced the pain of failure? One time in your life, most of us. If not, I'm praying that you will. You're like, gee, pastor, thanks. And here's why. When we're experiencing pains of uh, seasons of pain and loss, it's really tempting. You see it today for a lot of us to walk away from our faith. And it's amazing how God's word identifies with us all these years later. So 2 Timothy chapter 2 is where we're going to land here. It's the Apostle Paul. He can identify with this season of loss and failure and pain. He's going to write this entire letter, 2 Timothy, in one of the most darkest seasons of his life. Probably the darkest season of his life after he accepted Christ. He's in prison. He's in chains. But yet he's writing a letter of encouragement to his protege, Timothy. 
But really, it's God's Word speaking to all of us. And here's what he says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, starting in verse 8. We'll read for a while. And I just want you to listen. It's a little deep. I try to bring this home in a common denominator way, but just listen. Remember Jesus Christ. Raised from the dead, descended from David. Paul saying, this is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here, this is an interesting thing that some of us don't catch. Here is a trustworthy saying. So you're like, well, the apostle Paul must really like himself. Here's a trustworthy saying. But most theologians will say this was a hymn, a song of the early church. It could be a poem, but more than than that, most theologians will say it was probably a hymn of early church followers of Christ, even in times of persecution, just to be reminded of really what matters. So the Apostle Paul says, here is a trustworthy saying, and listen to what he says. It's deep. you got to think about it for a minute. If we died with him, that's Christ, we also live with Christ. If we endure, we will also reign with Christ. If we disown Christ... He will also disown us. And you're like, whew, that's brutal. Then the next phrase, is it a contradiction in terms? If we are faithless, he, Christ, remains faithful. Why? Because he cannot disown himself. Why do I preach this? Listen to what God's word says, verse 14. Keep reminding God's people of these things. Things. That little early church hymn that should resonate today. Paul encouraging Timothy to stay faithful, to keep your eye on what matters, to have strength and stamina for today and tomorrow, and to also just own and understand loyalty. So, a couple of things. This trustworthy saying, if we died with him, we will also live with him. They're like if then phrases the Apostle Paul uses. Our death to ourselves comes at the moment of conversion. When you and I go what? Taking the hands off the wheel. God, I want you to guide me. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. And the world surely can't tell me where to go because they don't know where they're going either. It's the creation who gave his only son. The creator gave his only son to the creation, us, that we might have salvation. It's a gift that we don't deserve, but it's a gift. And you can almost feel it. You can almost feel the Apostle Paul saying, Timothy, bottom line is this. If we die to ourselves, come alive to Christ. If we endure, and I wrote this, our endurance on this earth validates, it does validate our relationship with God. When people go, wait a minute, how are you going through that season you're going through? I know you. It's a struggle. I can't believe someone was disloyal to you. I can't believe that happened. I can't believe this season of loss and pain and suffering. How are you still standing on your faith? That's when people go, well, there's a difference in you. Maybe that's what I need. If we endure, that's when people see our faith shine. Then the last one is this, and I have to unpack it because you're like, well, Brent, you're speaking out of both sides of your mouth. What the heck does Scripture mean here? If we disown him, he'll disown us. But if we're faithless, he is faithful. Which is it? If you read the original text, disowning is a continual, complete disowning. And we know a lot of people that way, that their entire lives will be a continual and complete disowning that God is God. And God is can save. And God's grace is available. And salvation is to all. But I don't need any of that. I don't want any of that. I'll be loyal to myself. The Bible speaks to a judgment day that people will face a Christless eternity. And it's nothing that God did. It's everything that we did. We rejected this gift, that complete and continual disowning. 
Jesus will say it. God will say it in the judgment. Hey, there'll be a moment where he'll look at even people that are, quote, religious, that never had that relationship, that always wanted their hands on the wheel. Hey, depart from me in this moment. I didn't, didn't even know you. But if you're like Peter, and I'm like Peter, and you have moments of faithlessness, moments of, hey, I'm in a dark place. I'm in over my head. I don't really know what I'm doing, and I'm just struggling with this season of loss and pain, and I'm saying some things to not only you, God, but to people around me that I love, saying some things that I'll regret. That's when God's faithfulness shines, because even in our faithlessness, even in that season, God does not walk away from us. He's more loyal to us than we ever will be loyal to him. Old president made this statement. I think it was Woodrow Wilson a long time ago. Loyalty means nothing unless it has its heart in the absolute principle of self-sacrifice. So I want you to look at me. If you get nothing out of the message, get this. The greatest symbol of loyalty ever known in the history of man is that. That's proven not proclaimed. There is no double-mindedness in Christ that he would sacrifice it all on the cross to pay for our sins. And I think Paul's looking to Timothy in 2 Timothy saying, get the subject matter off you, Timothy. It's always about this. Jesus is faithful. He will be faithful. No matter what you go through, he will remain with you. Remain with him. It's not you wondering to find Jesus. Jesus is right here beside you. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I might be chained. I might be down. I might be lost. But the gospel is never chained. God's word is never chained. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So in our society, that's disposable. We're disloyal because society is disposable. We want to move on to bigger and greater things. We get tired. We get bored. People leave church because they're tired of my jokes or they just want something fresh or new. All kinds of reasons. I just want to switch from Ford to Chevy. I don't know why. I just want something new. I want the new shiny toy. But don't let that bleed into your faith because you'll have your hands on the wheel, lost not know where you're going, and more than likely, you're going to be leading others who will now be lost and not know where they're going. Always say, God, thank you for being more loyal to me than I am to you. I need you. I need your grace. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed for just a minute, I can't preach this message without giving you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. I want you to understand that the cross of Christ is the most loyal symbol in the history of man because God's own son came and died on a cross for our sin that we might have a relationship with God, that we might have eternal hope. Just like the video, God sent Jesus Christ to die on a cross because once we experience that love, we will never want to go back. God, your grace and your mercy are amazing. May we simply accept a free gift, a sign of loyalty to you that we follow you and there's no turning back for us. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, the Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. I want you to pray a prayer. I want you to whisper this prayer in your heart, your mind, and your soul. If you've never done this and you're like, Brent, this is me. My hands are on the wheel of my life. I've been leading and I'm just doing my thing. And boy, I, I feel lost half the time. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to fill my life with stuff that's simply not gonna do it. It's time for you to let go of the wheel and allow Christ to come into your life and to whisper in your heart this prayer of God, I, I confess that I am a sinner. I confess that I don't have the answers on my own. I confess that I've tried in all kinds of places for a long time to fill these voids in my life that can never be filled. And I confess right now my need for a savior. It's gotta start there. After that moment of confession, this is me, now it's time to repent. It's time to walk away from the culture and it's time to walk to Christ. 
I repent of my sin. I repent of the way that I've been living. And God, I want to walk toward you. You've been more loyal to me than I am to you. And it's now time for me to turn to you. Say, God, you got my life. Guide me. Believe that Jesus died on that cross to take our sins away, that he rose again to conquer the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and to receive a gift of salvation is the greatest decision anyone will ever make. I have no idea why people reject this message other than we want to be loyal to ourselves and ourselves alone. And it takes humility and it takes submission to let go of the wheel and say, God, I receive a gift that I don't deserve, this gift of salvation that comes from your love You have shown me what loyalty is all about, God. I want to give my life to you. To confess your need for a Savior. To repent of our sins and walk toward Christ. To believe right here that Jesus died, not just for the world, but for you. That you might have a relationship with the God who created you. And to receive a gift. To receive a gift. To receive a gift that we don't deserve. But a gift that's ours because of God's love and God's loyalty. If you prayed that prayer. And you're like, Brent, I know that's what I need. I'm whispering that in my heart. I, I just really sense that's what I need to be doing with heads bowed and eyes closed. I want you to raise your hand and let me know you prayed that prayer. Be bold right here. Raise your hand all over, all over. You can put your hands down as soon as you raise them, but keep raising them. Raise them. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. Here's what I need. I want you to tell somebody. I want you to walk out of this building somehow, some way, and a lot of you raise your hands. Let somebody know that you stand with Jesus Christ. He is your Lord and he is your Savior. Keep coming to church, but let somebody know today that you gave your life to Christ. You can email me, Brent, at pathwayschurch.com to say, Brent, I pray that prayer. We'd love to just pray with you and celebrate, but the greatest decision we will ever make in our lives, bar none, is to accept a free gift of salvation that we don't deserve simply by letting go of the steering wheel of our lives and letting Christ guide us and direct us as he has forgiven us because of what he has done on the cross, the greatest sign of loyalty we will ever know. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this idea, this value that, yeah, it's it's gone in our society, but let us look to you first. You're faithful. Let it bleed into our lives. Let us be loyal and faithful, first and foremost, to our faith and our relationship with you as we seek you first and everything else takes care of itself. Let us not get our priorities so mixed up that we're so loyal to our brands that we forgot what matters the most our beliefs, and that is our faith in Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of the world. God, thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen.